So what is the bore effect and how does it relate to soma? So this is really important during the soma journeys where we're using breath retention to manipulate the concentrations of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the body. Now, the Bohr effect was something created by Christian Bohr in 1904 that deals with the affinity of red blood cells for oxygen. The simple rule is that when carbon dioxide levels are high in the blood, oxygen comes off red blood cells and then goes into the tissue cells. Okay? However, when carbon dioxide levels are low in the blood, then oxygen stays bound to the red blood cells. So when do these situations happen? In normal day-to-day -day life, we breathe in oxygen, breathe out carbon dioxide. If we're breathing at a faster rate, what happens is we breathe out a lot of carbon dioxide. We breathe faster, more erratically, and that means that the carbon dioxide levels stay low in the bloodstream and oxygen stays bound to red blood cells. What that can lead to over time is respiratory alkalosis, which actually can lead to uh, symptoms like panic, nervousness, anxiety. However, what we really want is to get the, the oxygen off the red blood cells and into the tissue cells where it's needed to create energy. So to do that, we need to slow the breath down and we need to be able to raise carbon dioxide and become tolerant to carbon dioxide levels in the blood. A lot of people feel uh, uh, too much panic when they hold their breath because they're nervous about carbon dioxide or they're not tolerant uh, inside uh, the reptilian brain to higher levels than carbon dioxide. And in day-to-day -day life, if we can actually have more carbon dioxide and more tolerance to carbon dioxide, it means we're gonna have more uh, dilated blood vessels, lower blood pressure, we're gonna be more agile, more uh, supple, more relaxed and more in the flow. Now, in SOMA, what we're doing in the journeys uh, where we're doing rhythmic breathing is we're actually breathing at a rate which allows us to breathe out carbon dioxide and breathe in oxygen. And we breathe out more carbon dioxide than normal, which actually for that few minutes that we're doing it, will actually change the pH where we have more oxygen in the bloodstream. And that will mean actually that the carbon dioxide levels are lower, so the red blood cells are fully saturated oxygen. That's why we always use the breath retention phase at the end, because what that does is it brings, down, uh, brings up the carbon dioxide levels in the blood as, we, as we're producing carbon dioxide from um, the metabolism. The carbon dioxide goes into the bloodstream and it actually creates carbonic acid, which lowers the pH. And what that does when you lower the pH is it makes hemoglobin lose its affinity for oxygen. The oxygen can come off the red blood cells and flood into the cells where it's needed. So getting higher levels of carbon dioxide during this breath retention phase and being tolerant to it is really good for getting that flood of oxygen into your cells. That's why I call it hyperoxygenation because you're getting lots of oxygen into your tissue cells. So uh, the other thing is that uh, during day-to-day -day life, we need to be more conscious of our breath and, make, and be aware of when we start to pan or breathe through our mouth, where we're gulping in too much oxygen and breathing out too much carbon dioxide. If we can be conscious of that, it will mean that we can be, uh, have nice balance of oxygen carbon dioxide throughout the day, meaning that we're more in a natural flow and we're getting an optimum amount of oxygen coming into tissue cells to the areas that's needed.